do you have a story you'd like to see or hear on this channel, I suppose? Uh, go to AsTheRavenDreams.com and click the button to send it my way. And of course, thank you so very much. This is a long one, so brace yourself. Last year, I, 23, female, moved into my grandmother's house to look after her. She lives on a big property with a field, an orchard, a large garden, and a dingle at the bottom of the driveway. I know this place like the back of my hand. I've visited her since I was a child. We also have a neighbor whom I've met a few times, he has a wife who baked us a bunch of really beautiful cupcakes that her husband brought over. However, at the start of the story, I had never met her. So, a couple of days ago, I wanted to repay the favor. So, I made a batch of 20 brownies with my sister and started my walk to their house. As I'm walking down the driveway, I snuck one out to eat myself because, well, I figured I'd earned it. So... I'm walking and eating. The geography of it is a bit weird to describe, but essentially, their house is on an embankment above my grandma's driveway, which leads to the main road. To go there without trespassing on their land, I would have to walk the main road, and then head up the hill to a side road and enter their driveway that way. On this day, I got to the dingle at the bottom of the driveway and felt lazy. What's the point of going all the way around when I can just enter through their gate at the bottom here? I'd been to their house many times as a child when my grandma's friends still lived there, so I actually knew their house quite well. Those friends passed away a couple of years ago, so this couple moved in about the same time that I moved in with my grandma. Their gate leads to a little path that goes through their back garden. It's a really steep back garden that mostly consists of wide wooden steps all the way across, with plants and garden gnomes on each one. It's pretty picturesque, honestly. As I was walking up their garden, feeling self-conscious about trespassing, but actually not giving enough of a damn not to, I tripped on one of those steps. I have dyspraxia, which, for those who don't know, like myself, is a brain-based motor disorder that affects fine and gross motor skills, motor planning, and coordination. I face-planted because I was holding the brownies and I didn't want to drop them. I ended up tumbling over a couple of the steps, too. As I'm lying there, shocked and in a little pain, I hear my neighbor's wife come running down the garden. She's asking if I was okay, obviously surprised to see me there, Bear in mind that she had never seen my face before, so she must have been extra baffled. I told her that I was just there to drop off some brownies that I'd baked, but as I'm saying this, I noticed the tub of brownies is just missing. I was literally holding them 30 seconds before. Cue extreme embarrassment. I assumed that they had fallen down the garden somehow in my fall, but this isn't a small tub. It's relatively big, and there's no sign of it anywhere. After ten minutes of looking, I admit defeat and tell her sorry, that I'll go make some more and bring them some other time. Red-faced, I retreated back to my grandma's house. Then, yesterday, I decided to go and sit in my grandma's orchard with my cat. He's a pretty weird cat. He used to be a stray, and you get better bonding time with him by chilling in a tree with him, than you do by giving him dreamies and pets or whatever. So my cat and I are chilling in a tree in my grandma's orchard, when my cat suddenly jumps down and jogs all giddy-like to the shed at the back of the orchard. It's a really decrepit shed that hasn't been opened since, like, 2006. It could have contained gold bars and I wouldn't have a clue. I thought that he just saw a mouse or something, but I was curious, so I followed him. There's a ditch filled with nettles and brambles right outside the shed, and I notice that my cat is trying to find a pain-free way to get in the bushes there. I'm like, what the hell? 
You're fighting a losing battle there, my guy. He looks up at me and meows, which is weird in itself because this animal never meows. Like he really doesn't know how, being a stray and all. I'm taken aback. Like, what do you want me to do, little man? And that's when I see it. The corner of a box that looks very similar to something I lost, peeking out from behind a bunch of a fully war-torn nettle. But I have jeans on and the pain tolerance of all my ancestors, so I waded in and edged it out. Lo and behold, it's my tub of brownies. I can't really describe the degree of absolute confusion I felt at this moment, you ever get that vibe that there's a bunch of calculations going on just outside your field of view that you will never comprehend? My cat was freaked out about it. He didn't like the tub at all. That's not completely out of character for him because he can be skittish sometimes, with no explicable reason. But I let him sniff the box, and then he bopped away with his back all puffed out. Extremely bewildered, I took the box inside and opened it. I counted the brownies, and there's 19, which accounts for the one that I had eaten on my way down. They're still completely fresh and taste delicious. I actually ate another one, so I figured I would take it over. I go to my neighbor's this time, the long way around, and I knock on the door, and it's the wife. I apologize profusely for the last time and hand her the tub. She was looking at me a little perplexed, and then she said, I don't think we've met before, have we? I'm pretty sure that this is the moment in most video games where the protagonist loses her absolute marbles and becomes an anti-hero with wild mental health issues. I described to her what happened the last time, and she has no memory of it at all. But I recognized her. It definitely happened. So I dip again, embarrassed once more, and this is the point that I'm at now. So, explanations, people? Hey Raven, I've been listening non-stop for around a month now. I absolutely love your channel and wish I had stumbled upon it sooner. Which, again leaving this in here to, of course, say thank you. Anyway, I would like to share a relatively short glitch that happened towards the end of my sophomore year in high school, so early summer of 2002. I was in theater and we had just finished our last performance of My Fair Lady. It was a matinee performance and the entire theater club, tech crew, and staff were going to go have dinner at a nearby restaurant once everyone had a chance to change out of their costumes, break down the stage, etc. A friend that lived in a neighborhood near the school was getting a ride to their house to change clothes, so me, and a small group of others, decided to take the ride and then just walk the neighborhood until it was time to meet at the restaurant. Before I go any further, I'll take a moment to mention that no drugs or alcohol were present, and I'm still close with four of the six people who saw this take place. Those four people still remember what happened and recount it the same way that I do. We had parked near my friend's house, waiting for them to change, and now we're just walking along the side streets, talking about D&D &D of all things. My friends were trying to get me to play, and were explaining character creation to me. It was getting close to sunset, and it was kind of humid, and out of nowhere the neighborhood gets super foggy and thick, and dark clouds start forming in the sky in one direction. It looks like rain might be moving our way, so we decided we should make our way back to my friend's truck. It didn't start really raining, but we did notice that we were getting hit with big warm drops of water every now and then like how it feels if water just drips off something onto you. I started hearing this weird buzzing sound. I asked my friend if they could hear it, and for a few minutes, it seemed that no one could hear it but me. It was getting louder and louder, and 
Finally, my boyfriend at the time says, Oh, I hear it now. I think it's the mosquito truck. For those of you who don't know, in places where mosquitoes can be a problem, there's a truck that drives around and sprays poison. It's very loud and annoying. But this grinding, buzzing noise was getting louder very fast. But now everyone could hear it. I had to talk over it. Almost yelling. I responded, There's no way that that's the mosquito truck. It was even louder at this point. I was holding my ears. We're all just standing there disoriented by this roaring noise looking up at the sky. Suddenly, I noticed two and then four dim lights in the clouds, in a row, getting brighter and brighter, and I yell, What is that? A massive airplane flying out of the dark clouds. The lights were the reflection of the sun behind us, off the center of its four propellers. This thing was huge, bigger than any plane I've seen in my life. This is where the unbearable sound was coming from. It was so loud. This thing was extremely low. Far too low. And moving unbelievably slowly. It seemed to hang and sway back and forth in the sky above us. The neighborhood has radio towers in it, and we were on a street that was very close to them. We could, in fact, see the base for one of them in the backyard of a house on this street. This plane was so low and close that it looked like it was between the two radio towers. It also looked like it was about to crash into the street that we were on. It would have had to. It looked like one of the wings was actually going to hit the towers. We all ran in different directions, holding our ears. I crouched down in a shallow ditch, crying because I was terrified. Then, the noise just stopped. I stood up and saw my friends looking confused as we all came back together to reform our group. We just stared at the sky. The sound was gone. The plane was gone. It didn't fly over us. We couldn't see it in the sky anymore, and we couldn't hear the noise in the distance. It literally just stopped. Within minutes, the fog and clouds cleared up, and that was it. To this day... I can't really explain what happened, and I've not experienced anything like that since. Without getting extremely wordy, I will say that I think it had something to do with the radio towers. I did get curious as to what kind of airplane it was, and after describing it a few years later to a friend who was super into military planes, he was able to show me a picture matching it pretty much exactly. The plane that he showed me was a picture of a Boeing B-29 Super Fortress, which was a massive American bomber used in World War II and the Korean War, if anyone wanted to look it up. This is a pretty short story, but strange nonetheless. Uh, just a quick note, I have my alarm set for 5.30am every weekday for school, with additional alarms 15 minutes apart if I want to sleep in a little more. So, the next alarm would be 5.45 and then 6. A couple of weeks ago, my alarm for 5.30 went off. I had gone to bed at a very late time that night, and figured that another 15 minutes would do me well. So... I clicked dismiss and went back to bed. Fifteen minutes later, at 5.45, my other alarm goes off once again and I clicked the dismiss button. I put my phone down beside me and flopped face down onto the pillow for a few seconds to prepare myself for the annoying long day of school ahead of me. After those few seconds, I grabbed my phone and got out of bed. I usually check my social media as I get ready so I went to unlock my phone. I saw that the time was 5.33 a.m. Immediately, I was thrown off because I knew that I had dismissed my alarm twice already, and if I had accidentally pressed the snooze button on the alarm, it would have gone off nine minutes later, which would have been 5.39. 
I proceeded to go on with my day, but that strange time glitch that morning was messing with my brain all day. I do work on houses that are being built, doing inspections and checks on wiring and various other things. I work on a fairly small team of four guys, and for the most part, it's usually just myself and my boss on a job, since I'm the senior member of the team, and we can get a job done pretty quickly. Some parts of my job require me to get up into nooks and crannies of homes that are still being put together, and, usually, if I have to cram myself into one of these areas to do a wire check, I'll grab my cell phone and use it as a flashlight because I don't own an actual flashlight. It's 2023. My phone can replace a lot of my tools, so why shouldn't it? Anyways, on the day that this seriously crazy event happened, my boss and I went to Taco Bell for breakfast before we went out to our job. But we went through the drive-thru. We didn't actually go into the restaurant. We got our food, which I will say was horribly unhealthy, and was something we should not have done, and got to our job. We sat at a partially built kitchen counter and ate and were talking about various aspects of what we needed to confirm that day, and what we needed to completely finish. We finish our breakfast, get our stuff together, and get to work. Throughout the day, I had to use my phone as a flashlight, and to call into the office for information, as well as text my wife. It was in my hand for a good amount of the day, up until around 1 when my boss and I decided we were going to take a lunch break. I put my phone down on the counter and we both head outside to just sit and drink our soda on the front step. It was pretty common for us to get breakfast and just relax for a bit on our lunch break, so we weren't planning on going anywhere or anything like that. After the 45 minutes or so is up, my boss stands up and says, Alright, let's get back to it. We should be able to finish this job out in a couple of hours, and maybe we can head out a bit early. I nodded, saying that sounded like a good plan, and we walked back in. After a couple of minutes, I needed my phone, and reached down to my pockets, and it wasn't there. After a couple of moments, I remembered that I had put my phone down on the kitchen counter just before we took our break, and I told my boss that I needed to run downstairs to go get it. I ran down to the kitchen, and it wasn't there. My phone was not on the counter. I was a bit concerned, but we were the only two on the job, and the house was built to the point that it had walls and doors, so... There was no way that someone could have snuck onto the job and stolen my phone. So, I figured that my boss may have been playing a prank on me, and had grabbed it earlier to mess with me. I ran back up the stairs and asked if he had my phone. He shook his head, saying no. I mentioned that it wasn't on the counter, and he asked if I may have grabbed it and put it somewhere else and just forgotten. I didn't think that was the case, but... Then I asked him if he could call the phone real quick so I could try to find it. He agreed, grabbed his cell phone, and dialed. And I could not hear it ringing. I definitely had it on ring, not vibrate, for safety reasons on the job, and it was not ringing. It was ringing on my boss's side, though, so it was definitely on. It went to voicemail at first, and I asked him if he could call it again. And he did. But that's where things got really weird. After a couple of rings, someone actually answered the phone. At first, my boss pulled his phone away from his face to make sure he called the right number, and he had. He then asked who he was speaking with, and the person said that they were an employee at Taco Bell, and that they had found this phone sitting on the sink in the restroom and asked if we were the owners. My boss stared at me and just sort of said, Yeah, we were trying to find the phone. You said it's at Taco Bell? The one at the intersection where we got breakfast. 
right? And the woman confirmed. She said that she would keep it behind the counter if we could come and get it. My manager said that we would be right there. Needless to say, this was confusing as hell. How did my phone end up at Taco Bell? Much less the restroom of Taco Bell. We didn't go in, so I didn't go into the restroom. I had used the phone a couple of times while we had been working the job that day, and I swear I sent a text to my wife. My manager told me to go ahead and go get it, since it was only a couple of minutes away, and I did. And when I got it, I checked to see if the text messages were there. They weren't. The battery was also at 95%, which, if I'd been using my flashlight like I had been, was impossible. There's no way that I was using my boss's phone at the job, as he was definitely using it. I swear that I had it at the house, and I swear that I left it on the counter before we stepped out for a few minutes, but it somehow had teleported to a Taco Bell restroom that I didn't go in a couple of miles down the road. Hello. Back in the spring of 2007, my wife and I were heading to the Late Show to catch a midnight movie. We live in the suburbs of the Westminster area in Colorado, so we weren't isolated. I usually work until midnight, but that night was a Friday, so I got off a couple of hours early. We decided to head to the supermarket to get some candy, and on the way was the city hall and across was the single street that we take to get to the 24-hour market. Several apartment buildings are standing a hundred feet high, and when we turned down the road, there it was, just maybe 150 feet tall right above the apartments, was a floating passenger plane in mid-air, and not moving, as if it was stuck. I slowed down as we drove under it, the lights from the plane were on, and you could still hear the engines running, which made it windy and loud. I thought that maybe it had gotten stuck in an air pocket, or something scientific, or whatever, so we kept driving as if nothing was out of place. And We got our candy, taking our time because we still had time before the show started, and headed back the same way. After all, my wife needed her insulin shot that she had forgotten. We were in the market for about 20 minutes, and as we head back, there it was. The small passenger plane was still stuck in the mid-air, and the engines were still running as we drove back under it again. But this time, I stuck my head out, and saw that yes, it was a commercial plane. A smaller one that seats maybe a hundred people just stuck there floating. My wife told me to just keep going and head in another direction towards the movie once we got her insulin. I did, and we've forgotten about it, until we headed home late at night and I brought it back up again. My wife refused to talk about it because it scared her. I was trying to come up with an explanation after all of these years. Now, I've read UFO reports about how UFOs turned into planes to hide, and thought maybe we saw a UFO. After seeing some people upload videos onto YouTube about planes stopping in midair, and a bird also stopping in midair, and then hearing your show, I think I did have my glitch in the matrix moment. A quick note before we get through this story, the submitter uh, did mention that English was not their first language, and I believe in this story, whenever they mention jeeps, they mean buses? Um, I can imagine there are probably places where buses are made by jeep and they're probably just referred to as jeeps. It's entirely possible. I didn't want to change the wording, uh, because it's not my story to change, so I did want to mention that in case anyone hears this and gets confused. Okay, here we go. 
I was heading home from school one late afternoon. The sky was getting dark and the lampposts were lit, and a white jeep dropped me off at the terminal, which was also a parking lot of a mall. A section of the area was allotted for the jeep terminal, and another section for the deliveries and cargo. The rest of the lot was almost empty, and there was barely anyone walking around. On an ordinary weekday, green and orange jeeps have other routes, indicated by large text labels on each side of the vehicle, and the unnamed ones, without route indications, were all headed to my village. While I was walking down the lot, I saw that there was only one unnamed jeep, a fairly small one. It's painted yellow and has no route indication, but since I've been in it multiple times before, I already know who the driver is and how many passengers it can accommodate, which was around 16 to 18 people. Subconsciously, and cautiously looking around for other passing vehicles, I reached the jeep and sat down inside. While waiting for more passengers, I noticed that something felt odd. The cushion of the chair and the structure of the front of the jeep looked less familiar. The seats were white and the dashboard was stainless steel. The ceiling was higher than I expected, and the jeep looked like it could accommodate up to 22 passengers. At that moment, I thought that it wasn't the yellow jeep. The seats of the yellow jeep were red, the dashboard was yellow, and it's old and almost rusty. Trying to prove my doubts wrong, I peeked outside the window to look at the route indication. I didn't expect to see anything, but there it was. The jeep was headed to a specific location, and it wasn't painted at all. Just plain grey metal. I was so confused because I was sure that this was the yellow jeep. I looked for it in the parking lot, but only the grey jeep was headed to my village. The lot was vast, and there were only a few cars parked there, so it's easy to look for any vehicle. But there was no yellow jeep in sight. No jeeps had taken off in the last 15 minutes, so I knew that it didn't just leave. I even looked for its driver, but he was nowhere to be found. Until the jeep had taken off, I was still wondering, did I see it wrong? Was I just tired and mistook it for another jeep? Or was this some kind of glitch in the matrix, and I switched realities? I don't know if this is a glitch in the matrix, a glitch in technology, or just good luck. Anyway, the universe has definitely been looking out for me. A month ago, I felt really weak with body pain and extreme fatigue. No cough or tough breathing, but knowing my body and normal aches and pains and the normal tiredness, I knew that this feeling was quite different. I went ahead and took the C-19 test, and damn it, I was positive. Although bummed a little, I was kind of happy because, hey, five days off work. <laughs> Anyways... I had some money put away for a rainy day, so I felt like this was the perfect time to use it. However, I should have saved that money for when I got my check and was missing a whole week of pay. Well, I didn't think of that. I was so bored at home that I managed to spend $1,500 on food and other random things. Whatever popped up as an ad on my phone and I thought it was cool, I ordered it. I also paid a couple of bills, and pretty soon it was back to work. Well, the check comes, and it's a horrible disappointment. After paying the rest of my bills and getting household stuff, I was left with $20. Now, here's where it gets weird. I have my money on a Cash App card. Anytime someone sends me money... The notification will pop up, and in the history, it'll show who it came from. I was getting down, trying to figure out who I could borrow money from, but decided to just go to sleep. I woke up the next day, 
and was going to ask someone to send me money and noticed there was an extra $20 on it. Wait, what? So I checked the history, but no one had sent me anything. Weird, I thought, but thanks. So I spent it. The next day I wake up and it's like 25 more on my card. So I'm like, cool. But then I was like, something strange is going on. This went on every day, literally, until I got my next check. I would go to bed with one amount and wake up with random more money on my card. I don't know how this was happening, but I'm glad that it did. My sister told me that it could be money back from something I ordered, however, everything I ordered came, and the money came off my card. Plus, like I said, it gives you a notification of where the money comes from, or goes to. However, this random money had no trace to it. It was just there, and I'm thankful for it. Unfortunately, once my work checks got back to normal, I haven't gotten any extras. It was good while it lasted. I was invited to a friend's wedding last Memorial Day. It's a four-hour drive to my hometown, but I have friends and family I want to visit, so I took the weekend off. Friday morning, I stopped by work to pick up my paycheck, and then stopped by Walmart to cash it, and then 7-Eleven to fill the tank, buy a couple packs of smokes, and then hit the road. I get into town, visited some friends, and then went to my ex-wife's to visit my daughter and slept there. In the morning, I put all but $500 in a pack of smokes and threw them in the glove compartment. I went to the wedding, visited with friends, and then went back to my daughter's to visit some more, and then headed over to a friend's. We talked for a couple of hours, and I ran out of smokes in the pack that I had on me. So, I went out to the car, grabbed the pack from the glove box. They were not there. I cleaned out my car, nowhere to be found. I talked to my ex-wife and my daughter, and they both said they didn't find them anywhere. It was late, and I was tired, so I turned and headed back an hour drive to my ex-wife's house to sleep, and would try retracing everything in the morning. After coming up with nothing, I put $50 of the last 75 that I had in my pocket in the gas tank, bought another pack of smokes, and went to head out on the five-hour drive home. I got back about five minutes before I had to be at work, so I just went directly in. When my shift was over, I went home and went right to sleep. When I woke up in the morning, I reached over and grabbed a pack of smokes off of the nightstand. It had $500 in it, and the other pack was in my coat pocket. Now I know that there's no way that I had left them there because I didn't stop back by my place after cashing my check. My smokes had somehow disappeared from my glove box, and then reappeared 200 miles away at my house. I'm still trying to figure out if it was a trickster like Loki or Coyote, or some kind of glitch in the Matrix. Hiya, Raven. I've been puzzled over this non-creepy glitch since 2016. So, I was living with my sister and brother-in-law. My sister left and would not be back for a few hours, so I decided to clean while she was gone. I finished the living room and was headed for the kitchen, and was relieved when my brother-in-law went to his man cave. That way I could completely focus on the kitchen. I washed all of the dishes, saving Freddy the cat's bowl for last in the dishwasher. I washed it really well, inspected it closely and rinsed it thoroughly, and placed it on top of previous dishes in the draining board. I turned around, grabbed a dish towel on the counter, and began to dry them and put them away. I had done two or three items and realized that I hadn't done Freddy's bowl. 
I know that it was on top, but I totally looked around all the dishes, and it wasn't there. I finished all the other dishes, and still, it wasn't there. I looked on the floor, all the counters, every surface of the kitchen, and finally looked under the sink. I lived there for another three years, looking for it every day. And even now that I've moved, when I visit, I look. It's now 2023, and I believe that the Matrix took it. It's just so strange. So, I'm 16 and was 14 at the time this happened. It was a few years ago, but I still think about it a lot. I stayed a few nights at my older sister's house, and when I got home, it was about 8pm, so my little brothers were getting ready for bed. My Bluetooth earbuds were dead. I was bummed because I normally sleep listening to music or white noise. So I go to plug them in, but my little brother is using the charger and we kind of argue over it until he says that I could use it. So I plug them in and I get to bed. The next morning I went to get them, but they were gone. I thought maybe my brothers knocked them down, so I looked for them on the floor and around the area. Me and my two little brothers share a room and it's quite small, so it shouldn't be too hard to find a bright green earbud case. After about 10 minutes of looking, my older sister texted me telling me that I left my earbuds there, and I told her that I didn't because I just had them last night. But she sent a picture of them, and I was very confused. I only own one pair of earbuds, because they were expensive. So how did they end up there again? When I told my grandma, she just kind of shrugged and didn't care too much, but my little brothers and I remember me plugging them in. To this day, I don't have any other explanation for this, other than it being a glitch in the Matrix. So that, my friends, was this week's collection of Glitch in the Matrix stories. This collection of stories was very weird. I don't know if anyone else will agree with my personal analysis, but this group of stories took the whole disappearing object phenomena to a whole new level, in my opinion. I've mentioned before that I do stories kind of in a random grouping. Um, typically by how long the story is, I'll group it together with other stories to make at least 50, 200, 5,000 ish words, somewhere in there around 30 minutes um, at, the, at the minimum. Alternatively, to add to the whole uh, process, it also depends on how many stories are sent to me. I try to do these submitted ones before I do ones from Reddit because, you, you know, they sent the stories to me. So this collection was all but one submitted directly to me, which is an insane number of stories to be submitted to me. And so many of them had stuff teleporting. Objects disappearing and appearing in places that don't make any sense, like further away. Uh, there was the, the box of brownies, there was the the phone, the, um, the smokes, the earbuds. So... It's not just they disappeared and then showed up again, it's they disappeared and were somewhere that made no sense which is so bizarre to me. And there were two stories that involved airplanes? What is the Matrix doing nowadays? Why are things getting so weird? I'm just talking at this point. Really strange stories today. Thank you so much to all of you who sent them in to me. You all are amazing. And to the person who let me use their story from Reddit, the one person, thank you as well. Now, of course, if you have a story you want to send to me, just go to asthereavendreams.com. There's a big button that says submit your story or send to me your story, something like that. Just click that, it takes you to a page that lets you send your story my way. And, uh, yeah. If you enjoyed these stories, please do hit that thumbs up button. That would really help the channel a lot and helps this video do well. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, as that makes you part of my collective, my Nevermore. You know? 
Um, you can also uh, super thanks, join Patreon, all that stuff for early access to content like this. Never ever expected, always appreciated more than I can state. Um, yeah. The last thing you can do is leave me a comment. Now, this is Monday, which means it's a glitch day, which means that it involves the word of the week. Last week, I was yearning for multiple people to comment, and look at that. Several of you did, using the word of the week, which was yearn. That's not this week, that's last week. Each and every single person who commented is on the screen right now, and several moments prior to this moment in time. And, yeah, just amazing people leaving me comments with the word of the week. A lot of them repeats, some of them new, and all of them amazing, you know? I love all you guys so very much, and these people that went above and beyond, well, I love them too. So, again, thank you. Now, this week's word of the week is at the end of the alphabet, and I need to pull up the page that has it, because I need the definitions to be exact. There we go. All right. This week, the word of the week is zap. Z-A-P. Maybe a simple word, I know, but still. It is to strike an object to target with a beam of energy or electric current or supernatural power. Let me say that in a better way. To strike an object or target with a beam of energy, an electric current or supernatural power. It sounded cool in my head. Uh, to expose to radiation, as to cook or examine, or to transport a person or thing to another place or time. These items were zapped from one location to another. There are other definitions, which I may put on the screen, but zap. Z-A-P. Simple word, but it's a Z word. So after this, I think we're going to have a little bit of fun with the word of the week for a couple weeks. Uh, probably not next week, because next week is a compilation. So two weeks to get your zap sentence in. Let's wrap this up. It's gone on too long. Thank you so much to everyone who listened to this point, and to those who didn't, thank you as well. Please remember you are loved, you are important, you're valid, you're the best you that you can be. Never let anyone tell you otherwise, never forget it. And until I see you again, much love and sleep well.